What's up, everybody? It's LG Do Said here. Today is Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. Welcome to the First Minute, a podcast where I cover marketplace trends, big sales, and everything going on in NBA Top Shot. We have a short but very good show for you today. It's been a quiet couple days since the throwdowns drop on Top Shot, so we have a little bit to talk about. And then we have an awesome interview with the one and only Roz Gold, who is on the show with us to talk about WNBA, coming to Dapper someday, as well as NFTs. Before that interview, we also have a little announcement about a programming change at the First Mint. I want to remind everybody here that none of the content on the show constitutes trading advice in any way that this show is not affiliated with NBA Top Shot, the NBA, or Dapper Labs. I'm just a guy at his house who loves basketball and blockchain. This is the First Mint. So yesterday, Tuesday, May 11th, really nothing happened. There was like maintenance for an hour, maybe. And then when it opened back up, there wasn't much going on. What did happen is that the prices of throwdowns continued to quote unquote tank since the drop on Monday. We talked about it in the last podcast. I'm sorry to foreshadow that type of doom, but we kind of all felt that it was coming that this pack was going to have maybe not a huge value, especially above the cost of the pack. And so far, that is proving relatively true. There's maybe only five or six moments in the throwdown set that are going for more than the cost of the pack. The lowest one right now is Terrence Davis, I think, around like $59 or $60. And the highest one is Anthony Edwards, which is part of the first challenge for Blake Griffin, going for around $280. Throwdown set... A nice rare set. A lot of people were stoked to get their first rare pack, but so far, um, you know, not leaving a lot of people too happy to have picked it up. What else is coming up this week? Let's move on. Well, you know, it might be still a little bit quiet. We're clearly in some kind of ramp up to the playoffs, so who knows what Top Shot might be working on. We're also expecting that Cool Cats challenge number seven to be announced any day now. It is supposed to be a showcase hybrid challenge. It's going to be Cool Cat number 28 out of 29. So this will be the second last challenge or second last Cool Cat that is acquired. Also, there are some potential interim changes coming to the market. Kind of picked up this information on Twitter yesterday. There were a few threads going around about changes needed to the marketplace. Our good friend Steve Veerman, who's one of the OGs who we had on the podcast a long time ago to talk about hollows, he pointed out on a thread that cooldowns in the marketplace have been what's really been killing it and killing the action on market in terms of deterring buying because you know you'd want to go and buy, but then you got to wait an hour. Not super fun, and that that has been one of the larger issues bringing the market down. But when he did write that on Twitter, Roham, the CEO of Dapper Labs, who runs Top Shot, actually responded saying that they may be working on an interim solution to change that very soon. No other details provided there, but I think we are all very eager to see some type of change to the way the marketplace is run, mainly to stop the bleeding and the undercutting every time that a new pack is put out onto the market. Anyways, if you're feeling bummed about that, I do have some relatively kind of fun and exciting news for you, unrelated to Top Shot, but very much related to the first mint. It's the announcement I promised at the top of the episode. There will be no Friday first mint this week. I know, sad, but it's for good reason. Thursday night, we're going to be live, and we're going to be live every Thursday after that. That's right. The first mint live is back, and this time, not on Friday nights like it used to be, but on Thursday nights to cue everybody up for Friday, the next day, and the weekend. We are going to be live tomorrow night at 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 o'clock Eastern on the First Mint YouTube channel. We are going to plaster it all over Twitter. There's going to be a slightly revamped format to the show, a bit of, you know, some fun with some new segments, and of course, the best part, some moment giveaways and tons of fun. Make sure you check it out. We are very eager to get back on the air and very excited to get it going. Next up, you are going to hear my interview with Rosgold Onwade. So she has been in Top Shot for quite a while. You might know her from the NBA circle. She's a 
relatively well-known reporter. We've seen her on TV a lot, and she's part of the boardroom as well, Kevin Durant. She is one of the hardest working people in the business and has also been one of the broadcast industry's very early adopters of this current NFT craze. She and I had such a good chat, and you know I like to keep our, to- our Top Shot podcasts to time, so I had to cut a lot of it out. Mainly what I chose to cut, and this isn't as fun, was her talking about how much Top Shot she bought and sold and traded in the early days and how many regrets she actually has about selling Series 1 LeBron. So it's not in the interview, but I did want you guys to know that she does talk about that. that like many other people, she bought some stuff in January and sold it way too early. Anyways, I asked her to come on the podcast to talk about the WNBA because the season for the WNBA starts this Friday and we know for a fact that the WNBA will very soon be coming to Top Shot and or to Dapper. We don't know if it's going to be on the same platform as Top Shot, if it could be in the same marketplace, but we do know that Dapper has the license for the WNBA and that we will see a product soon. Rosgold played college basketball at Stanford neglected to go to the WNBA and WNBA instead went into broadcasting but she has reported on the WNBA and she has a very special announcement in this podcast about some work she's doing for one of the clubs in the WNBA her and I speculate a little bit on the show about what that product could look like in top shot one day very soon have a listen all right folks we are on with the legendary the one of one Roz Gold on Wode Roz Thank you so much for coming on the first minute. It's very good to have you, and I'm stoked to talk to you about Top Shot and all things WNBA. I'm very excited uh, to be on with the first minute. You guys were one of the first Top Shot follows I made on Twitter, and then I eventually had you guys on notifications and alerts because, you know, not only do you share the news, but you also break down, like, how to understand it. And then the way I finally first met you was on Clubhouse, and you were introduced mm-hmm. as the Woj of Top Shot. So I was like, okay, got it. This is who I need to know. So thank you for having me. I'm honored. <laughs> Wasn't that the clubhouse where Woj was also there? I think so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Woj was on that clubhouse as well. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, oh, man. Well, it's been great having you be a great ambassador for Top Shot and, and you know, having such a, a great voice like yours uh, be into it and – uh, we're going to get into all that, but first, I think we'd really love to hear, for, for those who, who may not know you or who follow you on Twitter but don't know more about you than, than your great tweets about the NBA and, and sports in general, can you tell us a little bit about you, specifically your prior career in basketball? Well, I played, I've been playing basketball since I was four. My mom was the one who introduced me to the game. She never really played, but she had a passion for women's sports and women's opportunities. My dad, my mom is Russian Jewish. My dad is Nigerian. He played soccer. He was probably, I got a lot of my athleticism from him. It was ever since I was four, I always loved the game and basketball became not only a passion point, but something I was good at and a vehicle in my life. Basketball has been something that, you know, helped me learn life lessons, gain friends, learn about teamwork and hard work. I've gone to college on a scholarship. You know, it took me to Stanford. It took me around the world traveling uh, to play the game, to cover the game, and now I have a career in basketball, you know, covering players that and, and the game that I love. And my father was always preaching about academics and, you know, any any good Nigerian family, you know, you're, you've probably considered becoming a doctor one day, and certainly I had. And starting in broadcasting was very hard. It's competitive. And in the beginning, you don't make a lot of money. So I took a real job. I went, you know, while I was at Stanford, I did my undergrad there in communication, and then I did my master's at Stanford in sociology of business organizations and the economy. And when I came out, there was a company recruiting right off of our graduate campus, and it was Tesla. So my first job out of school really was 2010 Tesla. And um, What? <laughs> what? <yeah. laughs> Are you serious? You know, I had the great pleasure and honor of meeting Elon at like one of our company events and somewhere around the way I have a picture of us. But, you know, we all were really aware of kind of how brilliant he was and also how game changing um, what the company was doing. At the time I got there, I was in a rotational program where we like had exposure to all the different aspects of the company. And as it grew out, we would be the ones leading it in different locations, even in 2010 all of these ideas. So yeah, no, it was super cool. And uh, eventually I did get enough broadcasting gigs to call it like a full-time gig. And I started to pursue it full-time. And and then now here I am, I currently work for ESPN 
and that's a lot of basketball coverage and then on both the NBA and WNBA and then I work for the boardroom and this is a new lane for me and it's thrilling because I feel like sports and business is just exploding but I cover the intersection of sports, business, crypto, tech. Oh, and I have something new as well. It has well, I guess I'll say it here first. I um Oh. I just, oh, this yeah. is hold on. Wait, wait, wait. This is are we getting a first mint exclusive scoop? Yeah, this is the first time I'm speaking about it publicly. I uh, am so thankful and thrilled to now be the color commentator and analyst for the Los Angeles Sparks of the WNBA. So I'm very excited. Congratulations. That's 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 a huge accomplishment and they are going to be very lucky to have you. Thank you. I'm from New York, don't get me wrong. I'm from Queens. Queens Queens raised me. I grew up a very regular basic Queensy Queens girl. That's really cool, but you know, LA speaks to me. I have a great friend group here. I love the beach, it's my mother always liked the beach. You know, her family, they used to go to the bungalows and, and the Rockaways in the summer. But this, the, the, the Sparks franchise is so legacied. Um, there's only 12 teams. It's a very highly coveted position to have. On the team, there's so many legends. I mean, there's a number of them that I've, I, almost every one of the team I've either covered their college career, uh, played with or against them. And like, I'm super excited that the Agwumake sisters are there. NECA is one of my besties. My best friends, I played with her at Stanford. Chanae is like a little sister. I mean, the list goes on, and I'm, I'm super thrilled about that. And I've had team experience before. Different role. I was in the sideline reporter role. But with the Golden State Warriors, my first year with them was Steve Kerr's first year. So, you know, by the grace of God, I really caught incredible timing um, to be a part of the historic, legendary run that that team was on. I saw, you know, I think... Two of the three championships. I saw the first year of KD, that first 2015 year, which was so unexpected, so pure, so exciting. And I learned a lot in that moment and uh, in that time. And, you know, so I'll take that team experience with me to the Sparks. And then many years ago, I did seven years with another team with the New York Liberty of the WNBA. And, and that was, man, that really launched my career, period. And taught me a lot about the industry. So very fortunate career, very thankful. You could, I love hoops uh, and on both sides, men's, women's, women's college basketball, men's college basketball, it, you name it, I've called it, I've followed it, I'm a part of it. You've been, do, you've been calling basketball, you've been covering all this stuff for a decade now, but Top Shot is new. It's only in the last year. And I wanna know, Ross, to bring it all back, because this is a Top Shot show, we're a Top Shot show. How did you first hear about Top Shot? And, and please be frank with what your actual first impression was when you heard that there were going to be digital basketball cards that were actual highlights from games. I didn't even really understand what Top Shot was. I heard about it because I've been working for The Boardroom, a sports business platform created by Kevin Durant and Rich Kleiman. And I cover the, the intersection of you know these worlds. And Top Shot absolutely is sports meeting crypto, tech, and business. It started first with me deciding I am tired of being inactive because crypto feels foreign or intimidating. I refuse to not be aware. I refuse to accept that that I was going to ignore it. And and I, I felt that let me try. I can, you know, I can figure this out. And I and then at the end of the day, I was like, yo, this is basketball. There's something happening here that is about basketball. Like, give it a try. Then I um I there was a huge explosion. And I was naturally, I think, you know, speaking about Tao Shot on the platforms I was on, and I recognized as a broadcaster, whether that was Sports Nation or like, you know, jumping on little digital platforms or uh, whether that was the boardroom or ESPN programming or hoop streams, and everybody started to talk about it. But I felt like the difference between the way I was speaking about it and others was they were speaking about it like a foreign alien. Like, what is Top Shot? And what does this mean and do? Can you believe it? It's digital plays. And I <laughs> and I was like, man, I was like, the way I'm talking about it is like, oh my God, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the space. I'm making friends, my, my collection. These are my favorite moments. Um, here's why I chose these. Here's who I think is exciting and up and coming. We know that the WNBA is coming to Top Shot in one way or another. We've heard the rumors. We've heard Jacob mention in office hours. It's been it's been mentioned. How do you think the WNBA is going to integrate into the Top Shot ecosystem? Well, I'm personally thrilled about it. One, I think the collaboration uh, NBA and W and Top and Dapper and Topper Labs and Crypto really showed us the potential here. 
I think one of the story, things that I liked hearing about the NBA was there were so many people who came to Top Shot that were um, not necessarily huge NBA fans and then followed the game more because of their, you know, interest in the platform. I think that the same will probably come true for the W. Like there'll be people who are there figuring out, um, you know, who should I collect? What's important? And there'll be more people watching the games and tuning in just to be able to have an advantage by understanding the storylines and the potential and the upside of all the players. So I think this is a win for exposure for the W. And I think on the Dapper Lab side, I think this is a great a great partnership that they, they can be positioned with with the W. The women of the WNBA right now are riding the momentum of probably their biggest, most impactful, powerful uh, season yet coming out of the bubble. You know, WNBA finals ratings were up. The engagement on social media is up. Uh, the selling of, of, of merch, whether it be the new Nike 25th season jerseys that came out or the orange WNBA hoodies. The WNBA has become very impactful and cool and popular. Um, and as it steps into this season, it's actually its 25th anniversary season. I think the NBA is getting close to 75 or something. Well, it shows you how much younger the W is, there's a lot to celebrate, there's a lot of adversity they've overcome, and there's more to do. And I think, especially when you see the W in its most authentic self, it's more than X's and O's, it's how these women have long been on the front lines of social justice, racial justice, police brutality, pay gaps, equity, equity of sexuality, all these different communities that they represent and stand up for, I think the allegiance is, is something that any company should be killing themselves to get or rushing to get because that's exactly what we've been campaigning for this whole summer through protests, through adversity and beyond. So I think it's a great, a great moment and I'm excited to how they do it. And I heard uh, that they'll be doing it. It'll be a top shot, it'll be a Dapper Labs product, product but it's gonna be specific to the W, which I think is very important. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was curious about. And you know, I totally agree with you, especially from the fandom side that even for me, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm a big NBA fan, but I think even just having moments of WNBA as collectibles for me would be such an easy way to start to learn the players and how good they are, right? Because, you know, I've always said the Top Shot is like, it's popularity contest mixed with skill. So I guess my question for you is, you know, if we, if we had, you know, when this Top Shot WNBA does come out, and this is a very granular question, so there, there is no right or wrong answer. Do you think that Dapper is going to release, like, start off with, like, here's the WNBA legends, like, here's Candace Parker, Sue Bird, like, here's the classics, the big names you already know? Or is it going to kick off with, like, here's all the players from this season, uh, here's, here's the current stars like Brianna Stewart? How would you approach it if you could kind of craft it? I think we should dive in on who's here now, and then maybe there'll be run it backpacks like there was with the NBA, where... We tap in with the, the stars of yet of the past. You know, the good news is that some of these players who were the stars of past too, like a Sue Bird, you know, has been in the league for so many years. She's still here now. You can still tell those stories. It's important to note with the 25th season, the W has made and a lot of the teams have made a commitment to um, really tapping into the rich heritage and past of past players, the Teresa Weatherspoons, the Lisa Leslie's, the Kim Hamptons, um, you know, and the Cheryl Swoops, the Cynthia Coopers, like you, you know, them players that when the season started, I think the inaugural season was 97. Man, I, I remember the, the hype and the, the largeness of it. I remember being a little girl in New York and my mother, I'd never seen a pro game. I'd never been to the Garden. I'm from New York. We were able to find tickets to the WNBA games. The, the, the feeling in a WNBA game is full of fun, dancing, family days, um, you know, the players are accessible. And, you know, for me to see as a little young little girl, like all these, I have pictures of me at camps, you know, to see these women in those positions gave me something to be thrilled about and imagine myself being there, especially as a, as a black, you know, girl to see black women doing this. I remember I have a picture of me at a camp getting an autograph from Kim Hampton and Teresa Weatherspoon. And like, it was a huge day and you could see it all over my face. You know, same thing for Becky Hamm and people like that. You know, this is a season of tapping into the rich heritage, but I think it's important to get people hooked and excited about who's currently here as well. Because again, Top Shot is not a 2021 uh, product only. This is this every season. There's going to be new stories, new plays, new significant moments to the to the 
history of that player, of that franchise, uh, to the ecosystem of the NBA or WNBA period. This doesn't end. It restarts season after season. So yes, I think we're in season two and series two, and there's a lot of emphasis on this series one. Of course, it was the first uh, with the NBA to have top shot moments. And also, you know, it, it'll 10 years from now, by the grace of God, you know, we'll look back at a bubble season and be like, what? And that will be very historically significant. But I do think this product has a longevity. Imagine if the product was only its most valuable from the first season. That would stink eventually because it will be really hard to get in and expensive, right? But this is a product that every year there's new things to be excited and pumped about and have conversations around. Um, that's why I think, again, this is such a great uh, community to be a part of because this is a long-term play. I totally agree. Last last question for you. This is a little bit off from what we were just talking about, but I want to hear about your interest in other NFTs, specifically your Twitter profile photo. Oh, my crypto punk. So first I want to give Dapper Labs their product, their flowers. Top Shot is everything I've been taught. I've now got, you know, gained some crypto NFT mentors if you will. I've, you know, sliding into DMs and on cl and in clubhouse rooms. I am looking for engaged communities that are active, that provide fulfillment and utility for those who belong to them. Top Shot does that. Uh, CryptoPunks does that. CryptoPunks actually, for me, when I, I had been seeing people tweeting about it and talking about it, the floor is rising, the floor is rising. And I was like, and then when I had heard the price point to get in, you know, months ago, even at that time, it seemed kind of, you know, pricey to, to jump, right? But when I, I, I don't just throw my money at anything. I'm not rich, you know, but I try to, if I can fundamentally understand it and see the significance and see that there is a community and a, and a, and a utility. Now, late, lately, I've been trying to understand what the utility is. But at first, you know, community is important because none of this stuff matters if there isn't a community who values it. So if you were some of the people who grabbed a bored ape yacht club, you know, ape, or if you're talking about the Meebits drop or the Gary V drop or all these new things that are coming out this that have come out this week, the hype must exist past the first week. All those people who were saying, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, for the Board It Yacht Club and Clubhouses, y'all got to do that six months from now and a year from now if you want this to mean anything for your community over the course of time. It only is as valuable as the community that believes in it. So you really get out what you put into it. And so when I think about the CryptoPunk, once I also understood its historical significance as like an OG NFT, so I leaped and I grabbed my first and I was in there, you know, I found somebody, I met somebody in Greece literally, who I slid in their DMs, we talked, we found an, uh, an opportunity for me to get in. And then when, once I was more immersed, I was like, oh, wait. And then I grabbed a second one that spoke more to, looked and felt more like me. My girl has a headband. You know, she's an athlete. She got a little jewelry. She can get fancy. You know, I'm a broadcaster. I can step it up. She got her little makeup on. She's trying to be cute. You know what I mean? Like, so she's an athlete. She's cute. She got a little fancy piece of jewelry on. And like, she spoke to me. She's a black girl. So I was like, I was into her and I'm like, boom, this is my girl. This is my brand. This is my avatar. That's one of many things that I've done. I've collected NFT art. I've done some digital collectibles. I've followed a few artists and you know, bought their drops that they were doing daily and I've seen the data systems. So, you know, now I'm trying to, you know, especially with the way ETH price has raised. I mean, I used to throw ETH around like it was like a dollar or something. Now ETH is almost like 3,500. It's like, you can't even do that no more. But I'm also keeping an eye on other currencies that are going to be exciting. I don't think this is a zero sum game. I think many collections can be successful. Again, depends on the community. And I'm hopeful that there'll be, you know, other, um, blockchains that people can build on. And I'm very carefully watching Flow. Um, and I see, you know, how Roham and the team are actively on their Twitter, like building out, looking for the best minds. And, you know, there'll be others as well. So I'm just, again, it comes back to, I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm a step over beginner, but I'm a, a hungry voyager and just, you know, trying to learn and be aware so that I can make the best decisions. You know, you started off that whole rant by calling yourself like a newbie muggle, and then you just went on this rant about what the real value of NFTs are. Let's spoken like a true pro. So that like <laughs> you call yourself whatever you want, but that that sounds pretty expert to me. You've got a great handle on on you know what these are supposed to be and how you know the 
the the weekly uh, flow of a new project coming in and and then burning out. It seems like you've got a pretty good handle on that. So I applaud you, Roz. Like you, you're saying you're new to the game, but it looks like you've been paying attention in the right places to know, um, you know, to be a really great voice in the space in, in terms of where the value is and and what these things can do in the future and how they're going to change our lives. So, um, you know, give yourself a lot more credit than that because because that was an expert rant you just went on. <laughs> Thank you, Roz's rants, but. Um... Yeah. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Hold on. Like, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We're, we're not done. We're not done if you're if you're going to sign off because we have one more thing to do, which is called Would oh. You Rather, which is a game we play at the end of every single interview. All okay. Right, okay. There's only three questions. And basically, you know how this works. I give you two options and you tell me which one you would rather. Okay. Would you rather that you did get in on Top Shot early December and you understood it then or a package of 10 random crypto punks? I mean, that is a really hard question, but I'm probably going to, that's tough. Um, I would say, here's what I'll say. I'll say 10 random crypto punks because I already have the, uh, the top shot collection that I am proud of. I think honestly, I, I didn't get there as early as others, but I did my thing. One of my advantages was that I knew basketball. I picked up players that I thought, you know, one were on their way to be hall of famers and were wildly undervalued or players that I knew would blow and grab them for significant moments. So I'm good on my top shot collection. I, I would love to have more punks. It's kind of late for me to get in now. I couldn't, it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Okay. Great, great answer. Question number two, would you rather that so, through some magic of deals and, and copyright and all that kind of stuff that there is a, college throwback in Top Shot and you get a run it back moment from your playing days or in the next pack drop, you pull a number one legendary Draymond Green. I already have a legendary Draymond Green. I don't have the one, but it'd be really cool to have my own moment. Probably having a number one legendary Draymond though is the better investment. I'd have that and then I'd be able to buy <laughs> my own Roz Gold on Wood moment because uh, I could probably know <laughs> Hey, no offense to me, but I could probably end up getting that one. <laughs> <laughs> People will definitely send it to you. That's for sure. If, if, if there's any indication of trends in Top Shot of people treat, uh, you know, players or former players, you'll definitely get it just sent to, to you. So that's I mean, fair. Had you okay. Had, had Third. You said Maya Moore or Candace Parker, you know, that's a different combo. But a Roz Gold on Wooday, you might have to take that dra Draymond Green if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Okay. 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 Last one. Would you rather that this year... The Sparks win the championship on the most epic buzzing buzzer beater game winner that there's ever been in the WNBA and you make the iconic call or Elon invites you to go to Mars with SpaceX. Oh, man, I'm good on Mars. Um, I'll, I'll do I'll do the Sparks. You know, I'll do the Sparks. <laughs> win the chip. I'm on the call. Neko Agumake with the game winner. I'll take that. I don't got to go to go to Mars. <laughs> okay, that was an easy one. Easy one. I wasn't sure. I don't know. You, you, you know, maybe maybe Elon could could sweeten sweeten the pot for you. But uh, that's a good answer for sure. Roz, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, so much, Luke. Honestly, the first mint was one of my first Top Shot follows, and it will be the one that I find most important. So you know, you're doing great work, and I appreciate you uh, everything you're doing. Thank you for having me on. And that is going to do it for us today, folks. Don't forget you have until noon today, Pacific, so 3 o'clock Eastern, to sign up RSVP for the base pack that is coming out this Friday. That's right. We'll be back in one big queue this Friday. That's a 72-hour long queue, but we will be getting, all of us be getting another base pack. So make, you, make sure you sign up for that. Also, who knows what else is coming this week? Who knows? We might even see a pack drop tomorrow. If not, maybe we'll see some fun stuff next week when the season ends and the play-in tournament begins. Honestly, I'm excited to get to these playoffs. It feels like it's been a very long basketball spring. Anyways, we will see you tomorrow night on the First Mint live show on the First Mint YouTube channel.